chapter 36 uh, are two vav yod verbs. Uh, this verb is also known as the hollow verb because as it is, the r2 vav um, uh, basically quiesces, disappears, and sort of hollows out the verb. Uh, this is one of the two collapsed verbs we'll talk about. By the collapsing of the r2 vav yod, the form, as it were, collapses. And when we do the last chapter, chapter 38, again, the last two letters are going to collapse together. And we'll call these the collapse forms. And in my opinion, by far, they're the most difficult verbs in biblical Hebrew. Uh, this is definitely the major leagues of uh, Hebrew verbs. And so uh, you need to go over this chapter very closely. When we look at the weakness again, the weakness is the R2 Vav Yod has a tendency to either to collapse in some way. By that I mean it either quiesces and becomes a vowel or it simply just disappears. And when this happens, it causes the form to be um, greatly changed so that when you look at it, sometimes it can be very difficult to know what you're looking at. And it will look unlike anything we've seen before. So the forms here, uh, again, can be very challenging. When we talk about the strong area of these verbs, the answer is there is no strong area. These verbs are simply sick, and therefore we're going to have to work on some really good remedies to try to cure this. And unfortunately, it's going to take more memory than what we usually uh, try to do. We try to cut out as much memory as we can, but this one, it's very difficult. And so, again, um, very few strong areas. If you go to the intensives, where we've always had... Uh, some success. There we switch to a different type of form called the polel, polal, and hithpolel. And what you need to do is go back in the back of the book, look at the paradigms of the uh, R2 Vav Yod, and you can look at the polel and polal and so forth. And again, they won't cause you too much trouble. They're pretty easy to get down, and so I'll let you just look in the paradigms for that. But for these other forms, and again, we're looking at the hafal, we're looking at the hifil and the nifal and the call. That's where the problems are, and that's what we want to discuss. And so the first thing we want to do, if you look at uh, section 4 of chapter 36, is we want to look at the hafal. And the hafal here, if you look at section 4, again, is really a hufal. And really what we have here is that the R2 vav yod is really going to act as if it were an R1 vav, or R1 yod, original vav. And therefore, instead of uh, being a um, R2 vav, we're really now changing it to an R1 vav. And therefore, we're going to have the same situation that we had in the uh, R1 um, vav yod, namely the contraction of uh, UW becoming a long shurik. And so you can look at your perfect 3MS. You can see you have a hukam. And again, this is simply acting like it's an original um, R1 va vav yod. Um, and then again, you can see the imperfect. We're simply just changing the performative he to an aton letter. And then here's the participle with an original mem. And so, indeed, this is the, the easiest of the forms because, again, it's acting like one of the verbs we've seen before. And therefore, it should not cause you a lot of trouble. But now we want to go to the hifil. And when we come to the hifil, we're going to have to change things. We're not going to necessarily talk about our boxes and colors and call like we have in the past. Now, we're still going to have a form of the boxes. Now, obviously, we're going to still have the performatives. Uh, like, for instance, for a hifil, you have that performative hay on the front and so forth. We're still going to have those. But now what you have to do is you have to know what your performative vowels are and your thematic vowels are in a way that's really different than the boxes and the colors that we've had in the past. Now, again, they're somewhat similar. So if you look here under hifil, I'll talk about the performative vowels. And you have two performative vowels. You have a hyric in the perfect. And again, you would expect that. But in the participle, you would not expect that. So that's something a little different. Here for the participle, the performative is going to be a hyric, and not what you usually expect, namely a patach. But in all other forms, it is a patach. So for the imperfect, the imperatives, and the infinitives, the performative vowel is a patach. Now your thematic vowel. And here, remember, the R2 vav yod is quiescing, it's collapsing. 
And so now your thematic vowel, instead of uniting root letters, you know, two and three as in a normal verb, it's going to really unite one in uh, root letter one and root letter three. Those two are going to be united by the thematic vowel. And notice what I have here. It's a hyric yod. The historic long hyric yod will unite them, except for the special sere forms, which you've learned. So again, the sere forms are a little different. Now I talk about specific observations. And first we talk about the perfect. And so I talk about that with vocalic endings. In the perfect, those vocalic endings attach directly to the verb, but with syllabic suffixes, there's going to be a connecting vowel, a holum vav, which is often written defectively as a holum. So if you look at, uh, uh, in your book here, you'll see it under you know, section two here. You can see he in this column here, I have the vocalic endings, and of course I'm including the three ms in this. And you can see how the vocalic endings are attached directly onto the verb. So you can see the comets with the phony hey is attached directly onto the verb. And the shurek is attached directly onto the verb. But when we go to the syllabic suffixes, the syllabic suffixes have to be attached. I mean, we have to put some kind of glue there in order to attach it to the root. And so that glue is going to be that holum. You can see it's written defectively. So between the mem and the tav, uh, that tav being, of course, the syllabic suffix, you have the connecting holum vav. And you can see it for the 1cs, uh, the 2fs, and also for the 2mp forms. And um, so again, you want to watch for those connections there. For the imperfect forms, uh, I've listed those also here. And so look at your 3ms, for instance. You can see that we have the uh, patach. Here is your um, performative. And then uh, the patach, of course, is going to be lengthened to kamets. I mean, obviously, the kamets is showing you an old patach here. And then your connecting vowel is the hirik yod. And obviously, the patach in a pretonic open position is lengthening to a kamets. Then you can see the second and third feminine plural forms. Again, that's a, sort of a seire type form. And therefore, there, there you see the seire. Then you see the jussive being a little different. The jussive, again, being a, a special seire form, you get ya came. And therefore, if you put the vav consecutive on, the vav consecutive is going to pull the, the accent. And then the seire now is in the closed and accented position. Hebrew requires a short vowel. The seire uh, reduces to a segol. When we go to the imperatives and infinitives, again, we have special seire forms. Uh, notice I give you an um, imperative 2fs. You get hakimi. And uh, again, you can see the, um, the hirik yod. And then the, uh, there's two hirik yods here. The 2fs is the final uh, hirik yod, obviously. And then you have the thematic vowel uniting the first root letter, the kof, and the third root letter, the mem. And then the he, again, the original patach being in the pretonic open, lengthens. Now, indeed, if the patach ends up in the pro-pretonic open, it reduces to a composite schwa. And again, if you, look at the, uh, if you look at the participle, you'll see that. As we look at the participle, notice again that the performative here is not patach, but it's hirik. And therefore, when it's in the pretonic open position, you get the seire. And so you get mekim, not makim. I would expect makim, but we don't always get what we expect. And again, it seems like that the R1 yod verbs, original yod verbs, are, uh, again, this is kind of analogous to that. But if you look at the feminine singular absolute, notice here that, your, that the accent has been shifted over the mem, and therefore the short hirik in an uh, open propretonic position reduces to a vocal schwa, and that's what you get there. So that's the hifil, and again, the hifil is uh, uh, challenging, but if you'll remember your performative vowels and you remember your thematic vowels, and then uh, some of the specific um, remedies that you've got to apply, uh, you can handle the hifil. It's not uh, extremely difficult, but it's certainly uh, a, a challenge. The next form, of course, is the nifal that we want to look at. 
And uh, the nifal, a yin, will be a nafal. And the nafal is a, um, uh, for, again, for your perfect and for your um, imperative and so forth. And so that is what we're talking about with a nafal. And we've got to remember that. And so, again, look at your performative vowel. I say it's a patach in the perfect and the participle. And then a hirik in all other conjugations. I talk about the imperfect, uh, imperative, and the infinitive, and so forth. The thematic vowel that unites R1 and R3 is a holom vav. It's often written defectively. And then if we look at the specific observations, again, the vocalic endings will attach directly to the uh, R3. But if we have a syllabic suffix, again, we're going to need that glue of that holom vav. And so that holom vav will again be the glue that attaches them. And so let's look at that. Again, I'm going to classify the three MS with the vocalic ending so you can see it. You can see the original patak making it a nafal under the noon. And in a uh, pre-tonic open, obviously, it becomes a kametz. The connecting vowel is the holom vav. For the three MS, you can see that we connect the uh, hay with its phony, uh, I mean, its comets with the phony hay uh, directly onto the root, and the same thing for a three CP. When we go over now to the uh, syllabic suffixes, again, we must uh, have that holum uh, to attach the um, syllabic suffix. But notice here we have another little variation that I want to point out. What you would expect here is not a shurik after the kof, you expect a holom vav. We have dissimilation here. Instead of saying komoti, or komoti really with the accent, they wanted to dissimilate those sounds, make those sounds uh, dissimilar. And therefore, instead of saying komo, they said kumo. And so um, uh, you want to keep this in mind with this dissimilation with this holom. They didn't want those back-to-back -back holoms in these forms, and so the first holom vav of the thematic vowel dissimilates to a shurik. Notice that your accent shifts, and therefore the original patach, uh, being in the open propretonic position, reduces to schwa, and that's what you see in these forms here. Okay, as we go to the imperfect imperatives and infinitives, uh, notice we have the dagesh in the kof, and again, that is the noon of the nifal simply assimilating, but again, as you can see, we have the holom vav being our thematic vowel here. And so, again, there shouldn't be any problems here. For the participle, again, you can see it's a nafal. And therefore, you get the long kametz under the noon in the pretonic open. But as you add uh, some type of suffix to it, it becomes in the open propretonic position. You get reduction under the noon, of course. So now we're ready to, that's the nifal or the nafal. And now we're ready to go to the call. And with the call, of course, uh, that's where the problems always exist. And so as we look at the call, let's look at the general observations first of the call. We're going to have performative vowels again, and we're going to have thematic vowels. But uh, when I give you these forms for uh, drills, uh, I'm not going to tell you what the performative vowels are. I will have to give you what the thematic vowels. But from the thematic vowels, you should be able to figure out what the performative vowels are. But for your standard verb, and again, we're dividing it into standard and state of verbs, your, state of ver your standard verb is going to have patach as its performative. For the state of verb, you're going to have either a patach for verbs that follow the thematic vowel pattern as I'm showing you here, but it also can be hyric for those that follow the holom vav pattern. So for state of verbs, you have two possi possibilities for your performative vowel, and you want to keep that in mind. For your thematic vowels, again, standard, you, you have this possibility of a or long a or long u for an R2 original vav. But if you have... Uh, you can also have a long A, uh, short A or long A, then a uh, hyric yod, and this would be for an R2 yod. Again, we're looking at verbs here that are either R2 vav or R2 yod, and here for the first time we're looking at, I'm giving you something about an R2 yod verb. And then for state of verbs for your thematic vowels, you either have the long A and the long E, 
uh, or you, uh, with the uh, shurik or the u for the imperfect imperatives, or again, if for the statives, you can also have these uh, holom vavs. Okay, so the first thing we want to look at now is the specific observations, and so let's look at these. When you look at the standard verb, and notice uh, the three ms, you have the long a for, that's the long a there for your uh, third persons. And so you see that with a com, and you see that with comma. Notice the accent doesn't shift, the accent's over the cof here. For your state of verbs, you have two types. You have the state of verbs with the patach or with the sere. And so you say mate, meta. And then you've got the long o, so you say bosh or bosha. But uh, we also have some third person forms that we want to look at, and also those with syllabic suffixes. And so as we look at those, we have kamu, metu, boshu. But when we come to the 1CS, notice the shortening here. Kamti, kamtim, you see. Here we have the short. Uh, thematic vowel, so the non-threes obviously take the short here. And notice for this state of verb here, the, again, the, uh, when you get outside the threes, you get the patach. But with bosh, with this uh, long o, it's all the way down. So you see the holom vav in all situations here. And now let's look at the imperfect. When we look at the imperfect, uh, again, for R2 vav, we get these shurex, as I, you see here with ya, ku. You see that for the three ms. If you notice with the R2 yod, we, this is where the yod really occurs. And so instead of saying ya, sum, we get ya, sim. Now sometimes you, you know, it's possible you could uh, have a mixing of forms sometimes. But uh, usually you will get the hirik yod for this particular verb. And then for the state of verb, again, it can be a u, just like over here. So you say ya, mut. Or again, the, the easier one is the state of verb here, ye vosh, with the holom vav. When you come to the second and third feminine plural, notice the connecting segol yod. And again, this apparently comes from really an R3 vav yod. And so for right now, you just need to memorize it. So tekumena is what you have here. Notice that the accent is over this segol yod. Uh, and so this tav now in the open proprietonic position has reduction. And that's what you see all the way across with this segol yod, as you can see here. So again, you need to uh, understand that. Then we have the jussev 3ms. And I want to point out to you that the jussev here, again, is different from your regular imperfect 3ms. Notice you have shurik here. But when you get to the jussev, you have a holom. And so you say ya kom. Uh, but in the yod form, you get the seire. You say, ya, same. This looks very much like a hifil. And so that would be difficult because, again, this is a call. Um, this could be call or hifil as the, as the form looks, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a call here. And then you get ya, mot. Uh, again, this is similar to over here in this, the first column here. The third column here is similar to the first column. And then in your fourth column, again, you simply get ye, vosh. Again, uh, Bosch is not too tough. It's pretty good. Now, when you put the Vav consecutive 3MS on there, the, the, it will retract the uh, accent. And when you retract the accent, the holum, being in a closed and accented syllable, has to reduce to a comets chatuf. And therefore, whatever you do, do not pronounce this Vayakam. No. Vayakom. You've got to have that as an O vowel there at the end. So vayakom is how you want to pronounce this. Now with the um, yod form, you had a seire, and therefore when the accent retracts, of course, it's going to reduce down to a segol. The same thing for um, mut, yamut, when you, it has the uh, holum. And so again, just like the first column, the accent retracts, and you get vayamot, not vayamat. So don't do that. Uh, but notice here, here you have a historic long holom vav. These other holoms, this is not historic long. This one is, and therefore it cannot retract the stress. And therefore, vaye vosh, there's no retraction of stress here. And then I just put in a vav consecutive 3 and p 
to show you that in those situations where you have the vocalic ending, the accent cannot be retracted. You say vaya kumu, vaya simu, vaya mutu, and then of course vaya voshu. So uh, uh, I just put that in there to contrast it with the 3MS, how the 3MS retracts the, t the accent, but the 3MPs will not do so. Okay, now as we go to the imperatives, um, again for your standard verbs, if it's an original uh, vav, you'll get kum. Again, you just simply tear off the performative of the imperfect and you'll get the imperative. So you say kum, kumi, kumu, and then watch out for that 2FP. It's a rare form. You won't see it often, but still it's different. It's irregular. Komna, you got to watch out for that. And then you have sim, simu, uh, uh, simi, sim, simi, simu. You want to, of course, notice there that it's the original uh, hirik yod that's uh, uh, as opposed to the original vav that you have uh, over here. So original yod, I should say, here in the second column, original vav in the first column. And again, the same with the mut, uh, muti, mutu. Again, that's very similar to the standard verb here. And then bosh again is all the same. Bosh, boshi, boshu, boshna. So uh, keep that in mind. Then we go down to the infinitive absolutes. And notice they all have the um, holom va, so kom, and even som, not sim, but som, mot, and then bosh again. But for the construct, again, they reveal their real nature. So kum has the vav, sim has the yod, then mut, and bosh again. And now we want to go to the participles. And as we look at the participles, you can see we have kam. And this form, again, is identical to your perfect 3MS, uh, three so you want to watch that. Now this form also looks as if it's identical to your 3FS, this form here. Uh, however, it's not. If you remember, your 3FS was kama, with the accent over the kof. But with your participles, the accent moves down the word. And this word here is kama, accent on the end. Kama would be uh, the perfect 3FS. So there is a difference that you need to watch out for in these situations. Okay, then again you say sama as opposed to sama, uh, again the perfect, and then you say uh, mate, and then uh, meta, again the accent moving down is the only difference, and then again bosh is rather boring, it's always bosh, bosh, and so forth. So uh, it's easier to create, you just know to put both, but sometimes to parse, they all look alike and you have to watch out uh, for that situation. So that is the call. But now we need to look at some other issues. We need to look at the issue of accent, and we've already sort of touched on that. When we deal with accent, the first thing you have to know is that usually the thematic vowel that unites R1 and R3, that usually receives the accent, and therefore if you put a vocalic ending on the end, for instance, normally the vocalic ending will not drag that accent down the word. Normally the accent will remain uh, with a the thematic vowel. Um, and so you can see as I give you here the call perfect 1CS, you have this ending T, but you see it's come T. But even with this call perfect, you have the vocalic ending, but it does not pull the accent down. Like in a strong verb, katala, the accent's pulled down. Here it's not pulled down, kama, and again you want to make a, uh, a distinction here with that. There is, between this and the uh, participle, where the participle again would pull the accent over the mem. But there is an exception I want to point out, and that is for your call imperfect, second and third feminine plural. Uh, there the sigol yod will pull the accent off of the uh, thematic vowel, and so as I show you here. And again, the next thing about the accents is the participles. And we've already mentioned this, the fact that participles will shift the accent down. And so in all those uh, instances, you can see that. The perfect of the nifal and the hifil uh, have that connecting hol and vav. And that connecting hol and vav will take the accent, except for your so-called heavy suffixes, which is your second uh, masculine and feminine plural forms, those so-called heavy suffixes, tim and ten, those will always take the accent. But other than those two forms, anytime you have a connecting whole of vav, um, uh, you're going, that's going to take the accent and pull the accent down. And then finally, 
the um, taking of a pronominal suffix. Anytime you attach a pronominal suffix to a word, it has that tendency to pull the tone down. So you want to watch for that also. The next thing I want to discuss is the, if we could back out just a little bit here, I want to discuss with you a special um, R2 Vav verb called Bo. That's the name of it. That's the name of the word, Bo. And uh, it's indeed doubly weak. As you can see, it is weak in its middle with the uh, holum Vav that I have here, but it's also weak with the Aleph. But basically, it, its weakness is not the Aleph as much as it is the um, is it's uh, R2 Vav is the real weakness of this verb. And uh, this verb is extremely common in Hebrew. And therefore, that's why we need to <coughs> pay uh, a special attention to this. Let's first uh, focus in here on the nifal. And uh, as we look at it, you can see that uh, it has the same uh, connecting vowel of the thematic vowel, the hirikyo, that we would expect. It also has the same performative for the perfect and the participle. And so it's, an, it's a hirik uh, being linked into seire. And of course, I invite you to look in the back of your chapter where you'll see this uh, paradigm that I'm showing you. But when you get over into the first, uh, when you get over to the syllabic suffixes, you can have one of two things happen. As you can see in this first form here, this is a typical um, R2 Vav form. Namely, you've got this holum that's connecting the syllabic suffix to the root, shifting the accent down. So, of course, you're getting reduction. You can either have the chetef patach or the chetef sagol uh, under the hay. But again, that is a typical um, hollow verb. But also, if you notice this form here, heveti, this form really resembles not so much the hollow verb, the R2 Vav verb, but really this form here resembles the R3 Aleph verb. And so uh, you can see either one of these four syllabic suffixes, so you want to keep that in mind. But again, usually it follows this pattern here, which is the hollow pattern. And again, you can see the 3FS and 3CP where the endings are attached directly. They don't use the connecting holum. And then you can see your imperfect having the uh, hirikyod, the patach is your performative vowel lengthening in the um, pre-tonic open. You can see the jussive form has the uh, special seire form. And so with the vav consecutive, we still don't get retraction here because this doesn't close. The aleph has quiesced. This is an open syllable. It's not a closed syllable. And that's why the accent does not retract here. You don't, and so you say vayave, accent on the last syllable. And then you can see the forms for the rest of them. The only two I want to point out to you is this participle may vi. Again, I would expect ma vi. But what can we do? We can't fight City Hall. And again, the performative vowel for the participle is a hirik. And so do you see the may vi? But if you put an ending on, it pulls the accent down, and therefore the original hirik reduces. As we look at the call now, uh, the call, uh, again, ba, just like kam, shouldn't have a problem there. Ba, notice the accent over the uh, first letter here. And ba, u, same thing. Uh, you want to contrast that at the bottom of the page where you have the participle ba, which is identical to the perfect 3ms. But again, notice the participle feminine singular, the accent's over the aleph at the end of the word. Ba, a, as opposed to what we have here, which is ba'a, so keep that in mind. And again, for your, uh, uh, for your, um, in, but going back to your perfect, when you have syllabic suffixes, notice again, you just simply attach them on. The accent does shift with uh, ba tim, and notice again, you have ba ti. You can see the aleph has quiesced, so there will not be reduction here with the patach, I mean with the comets here under the bait. And again, let's look at the imperfect now. You have the imperfect form, yavo. The justive is identical. When you add the vav consecutive, and again, this can be written defectively with just a holum instead of the holum vav that I have written here. But notice again, the accent will not retract. Again, that olive has quiesced at the end, so it's not closed on accent, and there's nothing you can do about that. And then again, it's kind of like Bosch here. When you get to the imperative and the infinitives, you just have the holum vav. And I've already mentioned the participle. And so that's it for Bo. 
again, you want to take a, a special care to watch over that form. Now, if you look at section 7 of your grammar, I talk about how we're going to form and we're going to parse these forms. And again, these, these are uh, different. And uh, so the boxes are really obscure. Now, again, you still have your performative element of the hifil and the nifal and so forth. So you're still going to see performative elements. And again, remember, your performative vowel is going to be very similar to the boxes that you've learned. So it, um, that's, that's nice. But again, the front of the word um, is not, uh, the boxes are not going to help us as much as they used to. And nor do the colors. We've got to think of thematic vowel this time. It's, it's not fitting the patterns we've had before. And so again, you've got to memorize those thematic vowels. You've got to memorize the performative vowels. And again, the call will still help us in the sense of the performative, suformative elements of the call. So again, that will be somewhat helpful. So now we're going to change our usual boxes, colors, and call. Instead now, we're going to say performative, and then we're going to talk a performative vowel. Then we're going to talk about a thematic vowel, then the call element. That's our third step. And then when we come to the fourth step, what we're going to do then is talk about establishing accent and then really working the rules of syllables. And so um, let's look at the example that we have. And so I'm going to write now with the hifil imperfect 2MP of, um, of uh, cum. And so the first step here is the performative vowel with the implied box. And so, again, we're not going to have that. What we're going to do to start with is we're going to take our root. And again, this, is, this would be the root. And we're going to hollow it out. Okay, we're going to hollow it out. That's why it's called a hollow verb. R2, being a vav yod, has uh, quiesced, collapsing the form. And so we want to go ahead in the first step and do that. And the first thing is the performative. And we're talking about an imperfect, so we're going to go ahead and add the um, a ton letter of the imperfect. And we have to know what is our performative vowel, and it is a patach here. Okay, it's a patach. Now, if this were some type of state of verb and so forth, I would have to help you with this. But if I'm just using the usual standard verb, I, I won't give you the information of the thematic vowels. And so um, you should be able to, you should know uh, what this is here, for, especially for the hifil. Hifil, there shouldn't be any questions at all. For the call, that's where there's a problem. Okay, so we have the patach under the performative. Next is the thematic vowel that unites R1 and R2, and that's going to be, of course, a hyric yod. And again, this is much different than what we've done before when we're dealing with a strong verb. If we go back and look at a strong verb for just a second, um, the way most verbs work in Hebrew,